of three shows tonight here at AJ's at the Alley. We've got Coach Marshall till 7, Coach Keitha Adams from 7 to 8 talking women's basketball, and our first Todd Butler show of the year from 8 to 9 talking baseball. And for those of us hosting these shows, a perfect scenario. Those three teams were 7-0 and last week, including five wins on the road. So everybody should be in a great mood. Uh, I'll just caution you, if you are staying for all three shows, you might pace yourselves a little bit, but otherwise uh, we look forward to having you with us. Coach, uh, have to still be feeling pretty darn good about the win yesterday at Cincinnati. Yeah, that was a, was a great performance by our guys. I thought they were tremendously um, focused, uh, tough mentally and physically, uh, which you needed to be in that environment. Um, you know, they made basketball plays. It was a, there was a game in which they were pressured much of the game, and, and uh, we were able to take advantage of that, shoot 53%, and you know get good shots uh, throughout the pressure. Now, we did turn it over some, but you turn it over in every game. But by and large, we were able to be the composed team on the offensive end after beating the pressure and, and picked our spots with uh, going inside or taking the three, and uh, just a tremendous team win. That's a very good basketball team and a – and um, they hadn't lost at home in 39 games. So in order to do that, you have to play pretty special games. So we did that. Talk a little bit, if you would, about what we kind of talked about before the game. Their defense does, it, it, sometimes it's zone, sometimes it's switching man to man, sometimes it's kind of hard to recognize. So they do a lot of moving around, switching people. And I know you talked to your guys about you got to keep your head up, you've got to read what's there. And I thought they did a great job, starting with Landry, of recognizing opportunities and, and finding open spots. Yeah, they, I didn't really see the matchup zone too much. I don't think they wanted to zone us, but they did uh, a lot of run and jump and pressure in the full court which created some opportunities for uh, transition. Uh, and then they're man-to-man. -man, they switch everything. And they don't mind a, a big guy guarding a little. And in the first half in particular, we got it to the big guys a couple times down low when, when a, a, a little guy had switched on to him. And then a few times we took advantage with the big guarding Landry Shaman, especially on the out-of-bounds plays. And we were able to take advantage of that quickness mismatch. At one time, Austin Reeves took it to the basket on Gary Clark, got just enough of a step on him to get all the way to the rim. Yeah, so you never know who, who's going to – it's just you have to make basketball plays. It's not a game where you can script it as a coach and, and tell them that this is when this happens, this is going to happen. It's more helter-skelter. So, you know, you have to get them a little bit organized, but then in the end, the players have to make basketball plays. And, and to that subject, uh, you know, when, when thing, you lose a couple of games, people are talking about, well, who do you want taking the last shot in a game? and all that stuff and I've tried to tell people this is a team that a lot of guys can make plays a lot of guys have the confidence to take big shots and yesterday I thought we really saw that once Connor just signaled go flat one four and just made a play off the dribble and uh, you have a lot of different guys that can do that for you yeah I actually call that one from the bench I saw him with a, a, a big guy on him and if you bring the ball screen up, then whoever is guarding the ball screen is going to switch on to Connor. So I like the matchup with the big guy. And I don't know who it was, but he makes a couple of moves, and then he gets into the lane, and about eight feet from the basket, he does a little finger roll. So and that was a sweet shot. And, and he's really good with the ball in his hands, as we, we all know, with – uh, as many points as he scored over the course of his career. Certainly a play everybody's been talking about, and, and you explained on the postgame show, the, the home run play at the end of the game. It was actually there on the possession before, but Connor on a spot throw in, couldn't run the baseline, couldn't see over the guy guarding him, so you switched inbounders and Landry connected with Austin Reeves. Yeah, it was. I think we had run it once or twice for sure, and, and I think two possessions prior, it was wide open. I mean, there wasn't anyone within 30, 30 feet minimum of uh, the streaker that was going down the court wide open, but he couldn't make the play. So uh, we switched that. And then the same thing in the Temple game. We hit, so I should have learned my lesson, but I didn't. I thought this time, you know, if it's open, usually the first time is the time it's going to be open. When you play that ace the first time, and we played the ace, it was open, but we went back to it because we, we weren't doing a very good job of protecting the ball against their extreme pressure. And uh, it was still open, but not quite as open. And Landry made the beautiful pass to Austin Reeves, who I'm, I'm thinking with this athlete trailing him and catching him, uh, he's going to just dribble it out and then go to the foul line. But he makes a beautiful reverse layup and, and protects the ball with the basket. Uh, right side, 
right hand on the left. He let, finished left, so it was beautiful. And I wanted to mention also that that's a play, that home run play, that you don't run an awful lot, but certainly more than a few times in your tenure here, and people talk about it being a risky play, and to some degree I guess it is because you're throwing a long pass, but you've had a lot of success with, and it's not something you just pull out at the end of a game. You, it's something you actually practice enough times that guys are familiar and comfortable now with. I just want to know who those people are, who you, you refer to people. Oh, you know, there's always okay. broadcasters on TV, whoever. Oh, well, that's, we, a, we, that's a risky play. Yeah, you know? we've run it 11 times uh, in 11 years. And uh, how many times you've seen every one of them? How many times has it failed us? I don't remember one. There you go. Yeah, that's okay. A, okay. That's pretty good. Uh, the, the point is, <laughs> the point is um, you, you don't run it very often. And, and when you do, you, it's usually open because you only run it. It's a it's a bench call. It's not something the players do. It's a bench call. You see everybody selling out to pressure. And again, we weren't handling that pressure because they were so physical. And we made a couple of bad passes. They took the ball from us a couple of times. So, the, you know, do you do that again or do you do you run the home run play? And it has to be executed. It's again, it's a player's play. And the pass is a little unusual. And then you have to decide whether you're going to finish it or or pull it out. But uh, it was beautifully executed this time, and, and we had to do it multiple times to get it uh, to make the pass. So um, it's a play that my college coach ran, and we didn't run, run a lot of plays. We, we, he, he put us out there. We ran motion offense, and we were supposed to make plays. But that was one of the plays that he put in as a late game uh, si special situation. And it's amazing how many of my former college teammates and guys that I coached and under Coach Nunnally and all that – uh, texted me today, and they, they, they were all calling the play a different number <laughs> or name, but they were all referring to the play and how he would be smiling down from heaven uh, watching that, uh, in that particular play work uh, yesterday. For those of you who didn't see it or hear about it, and I think most of you probably have at least heard about it, but Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagle asked Landry about the pass after the game, and he said, well, I was a third-grade quarterback. And then there was a whole <laughs> fun exchange about how he was, his stats were 0 for 2 passing or something, but he takes pride in his third-grade quarterback skills. His mom, Melanie, posted on Twitter today, I don't know where else, but there is a great picture of little Landry, the third grade quarterback, running with the football. If you get a chance, you've got to see it. It's, it's really, really cute. So. I also heard, uh, I've, I've seen the baseball pictures. Undoubtedly, he was a very good baseball player. Uh, and, er, and early on, that's where he thought he was going to try to concentrate on baseball as a shortstop and a pitcher, but just a tremendous athlete and a good, good, uh, good uh, home run throw, Hail Mary, whatever you want to call it, uh, play. But um, interesting, Connor was not able to make the pass. He just he can't see over the guy. For whatever reason, he holds the ball here. He's, you got to be ready to kind of baseball pass it or, or football pass it. And uh, so then I say, okay, Austin, we're going to put you there. And he goes, Coach, you remember, I can't do it because of my shoulder. And he literally can't make a pass like that because of his, all those uh, shoulder surgeries. So – then the guy that I want to inbound the ball to, I have to put him out there. I should have known all the time. Why didn't he tell me he was a football quarterback? <laughs> and Austin is fearless and made the play you needed at the other end. Uh, also, a couple of things I wanted to mention about the Cincinnati game. That is only the fourth time in 27 games this season Cincinnati has given up 70 or more points. They won two of the others that they did. It's only the second time in 27 games that an opponent has shot 50% or better, and the 53% is a season high against them. And uh, Cincinnati had one more rebound and two less turnovers, but interestingly, you beat them on points in both of the, you had two more points on second chance points, and uh, it was, what, 12 to eight on uh, second chance points, and 22 to 20 on points off turnovers, so the sheer numbers didn't mean as much as they sometimes do. Yeah, well, it, it was just, it was quite a, a battle. It was, it was really a physical, tough environment. Um, I cannot o understate um, or overstate how difficult a place it was to win. I mean, they packed the place. It was in Northern Kentucky's gym, which is 9,600, I believe. Uh, they're doing a new place there at Cincinnati, which is supposed to be unbelievable. But in the meantime, uh, I'm not sure how many times they packed uh, Northern Kentucky because it is about 15 to 20 minutes from their campus. But they had an unbelievable crowd. Uh, it was raucous, and uh, you know, most of them went home unhappy.
good game on uh, on national TV for you and the league itself. That was yeah, a I great college it was a, basketball. Yeah, game. it was a great college basketball game, and I, you know, he, their coach didn't think their team played particularly well. I thought my team played very well. I was very proud of them, and um, you know, but that's just that that happens, and they're going to come to our place um, in a couple of weeks, and it should be an unbelievable environment and. Uh, two two really heavyweights of college basketball going toe to toe. I had a chance to meet their play by play broadcaster Dan Hoard yesterday before the game. We were talking about the Shockers being in this league, and I said one thing that's really fun for me is I grew up with all of those epic Wichita State Cincinnati games when I was a kid. And he said, "Well, maybe we're getting ready to start some of those epic games again." I was pretty prophetic yesterday, if that was any example. Well, that's a good word to describe that game. I thought it was an epic game. And just to wrap all of this stuff up, he gets a big kick out of this. This was Wichita State's first win over a top five ranked opponent in the regular season. They beat number one Gonzaga, for instance, in the tournament. But in the regular season, since 1967 here against Louisville and on the road the first time since 1964 at Loyola of Chicago when they were ranked fourth, he enjoyed bringing up that that even predated the voice the last the time. <laughs> the last time we won on the road against a, fi a top five team, uh, it predated the voice of the Shockers. So that's a long, long time. <laughs> I was, I was one. I was a sophomore in high school. Okay, so I was there one. You go. <laughs> well, it's a big win, another great road win. Uh, we will continue with Coach Marshall from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley right after this. Save Coach! It's the Patterson Legal Group. Someone's going to pay. Our client's been in a car wreck. Where's the insurance guy? It's time to pay our client for damages. They deserve more. There's lots of pain and suffering. You really don't want to see us in court, so pay it all now. Heard in a car wreck? Call the good guys. We're Tyler and Gary, the Patterson Legal Group. Call 550-0000. Hello, Shocker Nation. This is Cindy Carnahan with the Carnahan Group at JPY Gannon Sons. For the past 40 years, the Carnahan Group has been helping the great people of Wichita buy and sell homes, helping with first home purchases, patio homes, and everything in between. Whether you are trading up or paring down, we want you to call on us. Let us put our vast experience, our robust marketing, and our proven systems to work for you, whether big or small, our service is the same, I promise. I love Carlos O'Kelly's queso. Man, that's what I'm gonna miss most about Wichita. Oh, why the ref's taking our food? Whoa, 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 we didn't double dip. Looks like we won't be going to the monitor for this one. Carlos O'Kelly's queso is for everyone. So, how many quesos? 36, got it. You don't have to be a shocker legend to love Carlos O'Kelly's queso. Founded in 1919, Lewis Street Glass is a fourth-generation family business that got its start installing and replacing automotive glass. In these times of cut-rate, no-warranty competition from industry giants, we remain true to our long-standing policy of fair pricing and total customer satisfaction. With service professionals who specialize in automotive work, we offer all types of auto glass services, including door mechanical repairs, as well as glass restoration work on classic cars. Lewis Street Glass, where we're proud to be Kansas' oldest glass shop. It has the power to soften the blow. Break the ice. And melt your heart. A healthy smile is a powerful thing. It deserves Delta Dental, the nation's leading dental benefits provider. Learn more about our individual and family plans at deltadentalks.com.
eventful final moment of yesterday's Shocker win at Cincinnati. So to the Monday stop, Wichita State number 13 in the AP poll today, number 12 in the coaches, and there are three AAC teams in the top 23. Cincinnati is number 11 in both polls. Houston has moved in at number 23 in both polls. And former Shocker opponent Baylor has moved up to 26th in the AP voting, 33 in the coaches. Oklahoma's dropped down to just receiving a couple of votes in both polls as they've been struggling. The Shocker's 16 in the RPI, 14 in Ken Pomeroy. The average of the metrics is around a 12. And the strength of schedule now 36 after yesterday's game at Cincinnati. For those of you who are not aware, the one change in the RPI this year that actually may benefit Wichita State a little bit is they've done these quadrants. And it's not just top 50, top 100. They have a criteria of the, the first quadrant. It's if you've be, the teams you've played that are top 35 at home. I think it's top, top 30. Yeah, top 50 may be neutral and top 75 on the road. And Wichita State is 12 and four against quadrants one and two. Cincinnati is also 12 and four against quadrants one and two. And those 12 wins rank them in the top seven of all the teams in the country against those top two quadrants. So. Still not a fan of the RPI, but certainly you're making some, some noise in those areas that can help you seeding more. And you're getting opportunities to play them in the conference that we're in. So that's, a, that's another benefit of the move to the AAC that, you know, you get a chance to, I don't know when the last time is uh, Wichita State has played a top five team on the road um, this in, in after Christmas, you know. we. We've done it, uh, I, I don't know, I've ever done it here in 11 years. So you know, we, we're basically in our opportunities, you can say it's since 1964, but in our opportunities in the last 11 years, we're 1-0. and o. And, and somebody asked me recently if it turned out that Cincinnati would have come back here for that final game still ranked in the top five. When was the last time a top five team was here in Wichita in the regular season? It was KU in 1992. So there again, as, as you're saying, there just haven't been that many opportunities. Yeah, period. so you just have to, when, when the, 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 that's, the, that's the beauty of the move to the conference and why all we have 16 of those quadrant uh, one and quadrant two games already. Shaquille Morris, the AAC Player of the Week. He had 24 points, 13 rebounds against Temple, went nine for 10 from the field, and yesterday at Cincinnati, 13 points, three rebounds, two steals, two blocks, five of nine from the field. The nice thing is he had a great week, but uh, over his last nine games, 16 points a game, almost six rebounds, 61% from the field, that's kind of become his norm, the way he was playing last week. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, mean, I just, I hope so. And I, I, met, I told him after the Temple game how proud I was of him and how I thought it was his best game, not just in points and rebounds, but in energy and getting on the floor the, and making those great plays. We talked about that. But um, he just, he was tremendous. Um, for the for the last couple of weeks now and I think uh, we'd like to see him stay that way and because when he does uh, he can be dominant at times and that takes our team to another level and another guy that played really well yesterday and I hope people understand uh, the difference of when he's when he hasn't played really well but he he, he showed glimpses yesterday of, of being that guy is Marcus McDuffie I, he was tremendous in the first half I thought he got a tough call on a on a block charge, but made a couple of jump shots. His defense was really good, and he was everywhere. You know, you, you mentioned Shaq. I noticed a moment, one of the last possessions of the game yesterday, you're coming out of a huddle, and there have been situations like that in the past where you might have been really on him to make sure he did what he was supposed to do. Yesterday was more of ex an exchange between the two of you. You know what you need to do here, and he was reassuring you, and you kind of patted each other on the shoulder. A lot of maturity has occurred with that. Absolutely, man. yeah. I'm really proud of him. I'm, we talked about that, I think, last week or the week before, and he's come a long, long way. And uh, now it's just a matter of consistency, just doing, doing it every day. And um, I, I, I kid him all the time now. I say, listen, you got about a month more with me, and then you're going to start really missing me. And he, he, he jokes, and he, he smiles, but I, I'm not sure he believes it right now. You know, I, I hope, too, that people 
once in a while get the chance to recognize some things about this team. There was a moment in the Temple game late that I just happened to see, and it's just what this team is all about. You were subbing a lot late offense for defense, situational substitutions, and Zach Brown was coming out as you were getting the ball. Marcus was going to come in for him on offense. And before he left the floor, he turns to Austin, who's inbounding the ball, and claps his hands and is encouraging him and encouraging all the guys before he goes off the floor to the bench. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of pulling for one another with this team, a lot of love amongst the, the guys. And it, I think it shows in their play. Uh, they're very unselfish, and, and uh, you know, they just want to win. At this point in, in late February, that's what every team needs to be, and we certainly have that. One of the things that also could have gotten overlooked a little bit yesterday, and, and uh, it's just something he continues to do also, but Richard Kelly, a great job on Gary Clark. And he had a great defensive scheme, too. Shaq would flash at him sometimes. Different guys were helping, but he had principal responsibility. When we said something to him after, he says, oh, man, and I had him like every minute. Like, he's a load, and that was the toughest yeah, habit. He's, he's going to be a, a first-team all-conference player and arguably the, the player of the year. He's had a great season, Gary. Clark and Rashard Kelly went, you know, went toe to toe with him and didn't didn't blat it, bat an eye and was tremendous on the offensive glass as he's been. But what I loved about Kelly yesterday, besides his defense on Gary Clark, was his ability to drive, get to the rim, and finish. He's always been able to drive and get in there, but he hasn't been a great finisher. Yesterday he was making left hand layups, right hand layups difficult finishes against tremendous athletes. And we talked about having to read their defense, play the openings, take what was there, and he had four assists and no turnovers making plays in the half. He's court. like a point forward now, but he, he doesn't take the ball out, you know, run the offense out front. But once the, once the uh, offense breaks down and we're running the motion offense, he has point forward skills and capabilities. After a win like yesterday's, it bears repeating 74 and 16 in true road games the last eight seasons. 82% winning percentage. <laughs> Seven and two this year with two games to go at SMU and, and UCF. It's the best mark in the country over that time period. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm just glad I'm back home sleeping in my bed. <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate being on the road. As much as I hate being on the road, our team uh, really uh, performs well on the road. So I'm proud of them. And again, I think their toughness, their mental and physical toughness, and obviously they're talented and skilled. But it takes a lot of uh, togetherness and uh, uh, being able to handle adversity and be able to handle tough situations that are thrown at you on the road. It just it speaks volumes for what kind of character these young men have. And really the two games last week, maybe the most gratifying thing was that it really looked like the teams we've been used to seeing in Wichita State uniforms the last few years as far as all the things that you value in this program. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, you know, we love the toughness and playing harder than the other team. And I don't know that we played harder than either one of those teams, but both of those teams are really, really good. And they're also very well coached with tremendous athletes. and. You know, we found a way to come out a, a winner in both of them. And um, so maybe, maybe mental toughness is, is a big key for us as well. We will continue with Coach Marshall from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley on our Monday Night Coaches Show. So you want to join the popular RV movement? Why not try it before you buy it at Ramsey's RV Rental in Augusta, Kansas? Ramsey's RV Rental has top-of-the-line towable travel trailers that sleep up to eight for your next getaway, road trip, hunting trip, or tailgate. Small to large, toy haulers, too. Many of Ramsey's RV units come equipped with state-of-the-art flat screens, kitchens, bathrooms, and more. Book online now at Ramsey'sRVRental.com, where you could say Ramsey's RV Rental has changed camping into glamping. Ramsey's RV Rental, 316-775-3637. People come from all over the world to shop at Jacob Liquor Exchange. Ooh la la, look at the selection. One for every occasion. Oui, oui, c'est magnifique. You've got to be kidding. We don't have this much scotch in all of Scotland. You have more vodka than the Kremlin. When I want beer, this is where I get her done. Jacob Liquor Exchange has the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits in Wichita. We're right on the way and right on the price. Jacob Liquor Exchange. 
your eyes are often the first to capture important memories. Dress them for the occasion with a new pair of glasses from Howard's Optical. For nearly half a century, Howard's has given you the look you want and deserve. Ask about the ultimate lens package at any of their four locations in Wichita, Bradley Fair, Riverside, 13th and Mays Road, and their main store at 5405 East Central. Howard's Optical, a heritage of quality, service, and integrity. Visit howardsoptical.com. Proud supporter of Wichita State Basketball. Go Shocks! I'm Coach Greg Marshall. Getting an award means you've achieved something exceptional. So when I tell you that Welch's Heating and Air offers award-winning service with a 96% satisfaction rating, what that means is Welch's will do an exceptional job in taking care of your family's comfort needs. I should know as I rely on Welch's to take care of my family's comfort needs. Call Welch's Heating and Air, your independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning customer care dealer at 733-1600. At Belmere and Glass, we know our work reflects our family name, but we also know that what we do reflects on you. For over 50 years now, Bell Mirror and Glass has created and installed nothing but the finest custom-made glass, mirrors, shower enclosures, and more for your family or business. Visit the gorgeous Bell Mirror and Glass showroom today. And let what we do reflect on you. Bell Mirror and Glass. For over 50 years, a reflection of perfection. Welcome back to the Greg Marshall Show from AJ's at the Alley. And coming up at the top of the hour, Keitha Adams talking two women's basketball victories last week. And then the Todd Butler Show, our first baseball show of the year from 8 to 9. That last play, just another reminder of guys making plays. Uh, Daryl Willis only made one basket all day yesterday, but the it's one he one. made was a huge one with about a minute something to go. Yeah, and... and uh if, if the guys didn't play really, really well yesterday, they contributed in that way. They made, they, they well-timed their good plays. And that was Daryl's case. He was frustrated. They, they kind of had him down and he got a cup, he got one blocked early and he turned it over and he made, had an offensive uh, posting up foul, which is a turnover, got a charge. So he was totally frustrated, but you know, he, on the offensive end, you got to go with the, what he's proven in the last over a year and a half, and that is he can he can make a play when you need it, and he certainly did that. It was a big time turnaround jump shot in the middle of the lane. Wanted to mention a couple of things. If you didn't happen to hear this last week, Shaq with his 13 rebounds against Temple on Thursday night became just the fifth player in the history of the program to accumulate 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 100 block shots. The other names are Robert Elmore, Antoine Carr, Xavier McDaniel, and Garrett Stutt. So he's in pretty select company there. Good for him. That's fantastic. Richard Kelly, probably Wednesday night, he, he needs four more rebounds to become the 27th player in the history of the program to have 600 in his career. And he has really picked up a bunch this year, averaging close to eight a game. Connor Frankamp is seventh in career three-pointers, needs one to catch David Kyles for sixth. Landry Shamit in basically two full years is 11th in three-point field goals, needs five to pass Ryan Hurst, Fred Van Vliet, and Paul Gafrovich to move into eighth place. So that's going to happen soon also. So anyway, a lot of good stuff going on. Wichita State in the NCAA stats this week. Third in rebound margin. They've out-rebounded 24 of 26 opponents. The two times they've been out-rebounded, it was by one each time. Third in assists, still averaging 19 a game. Sixth in assist to turnover ratio. 11th in scoring margin. 20th in scoring. 30th in field goal percentage. 31st in three-point percentage. 41st in three-point field goal percentage field goals per game, 46th in field goal percentage defense, 49th in offensive rebounds. There's some others, but those are all top 50 rankings. And again, with all the talk about defense, that field goal percentage defense is 46th in the nation. The Shockers have been in the top 52 for the last seven consecutive years. Uh, so is that a down year? 
I guess. <laughs> for you. Still a lot of games to play, though. Maybe you could yeah, shut we'll, we'll, somebody yeah, down here. We need, <laughs> we need to improve our our defense, and and we do, and we know that. But you know, we need we do improve. We need to improve every facet of the game, and that's that's why you practice. That's why you work at it. That's why you continually scout and try to scheme against these guys. Coach Donnie Jones had a wonderful game plan against. Um, uh, Cincinnati and Coach Isaac Brown had a great game plan against Temple, and uh, we executed it much better in the second half. Uh, but that was that was a tremendous game. I just I go back to uh, the Temple game, and I don't think we've had a radio show since then, right? No, we have not. That was one of the best and most prolonged, loud Shocker Nation crowds that I've experienced in 11 years. I think the whole second half. The crowd was incredible, and that's 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 kind of what it was like at Cincinnati uh, this yesterday. It's big time, big time environment, and we we did that and and helped our team overcome a 14 point halftime deficit. And you know, don't you think that when your guys experience that at home and are used to that at home, that it actually helps them on the road when there's an environment like yesterday? Because they'd rather play even when it's against them than in a place where there's no sound like we'd run into occasionally in the past. Well, I've, you know, there's, we've played in some hostile environments, but I've yet to have a fan come down and steal the ball or block <laughs> a shot or make a basket or set a screen. So, you know, for the most part, they've been held in check outside of what used to be called the cage because basketball players used to be called cagers. They played the game in a, in a cage, uh, but now we have the wooden floor and more uh, benches and whatnot that separate the fans from the, the action. But uh, maybe I was meant to coach back in the days when we had cages. <laughs> and maybe uh – you know, you mentioned they haven't set a screen or anything. Maybe somebody was trying to make a basket with a light stick or whatever yesterday. Who knows? That you, that you picked uh, yeah, up unfortunately, it came a little too close to our bench. <laughs> All right. Um, individually, Landry Shamit, 17th in the nation, three-point percentage, 50th in assist-to-turnover ratio, 56th in assists per game. Richard Kelly is 27th in offensive rebounding. Shaq Morris is 14th in field goal percentage, 89th in block shots. And... The thing about individual accomplishments in this program is it's a little more unusual because your teams are so balanced and, and guys play unselfishly. It's not like you have one or two guys that you go to all the time. Exactly, and, and, and those guys probably would be much higher uh, in, in those numbers if they were playing 36, 37 minutes a game. And Landry's probably leading us in minutes, and I would guess that he's probably close to 33, 34 minutes a game. It's actually more like 31, 32. Yeah, so, so uh, then you've got – I don't even know who's next. Uh, uh, Kelly and then Frank, uh, Frank uh, Morris. Morris would have to be there. He's averaging like 22 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. And so those guys, you know, they're only playing about half the game or a little more, and those are the best players. So – I mean, if they were stretching that out over the course of 40 minutes, then it would be a little more fair because those other kids that are on those lists are probably playing many more minutes. And, you know, people ask me all the time about the differences I see in this league and so forth, and, and with all due respect to the Missouri Valley Conference, one thing you notice right away in this league is just the talent level. The teams that are in the lower echelon of this league have two or three guys on their team that can light you up on any given night. It, it's a league that has a lot of talented individual well, players. Well, how about the kid that uh, – I don't know if he was the second center or the third center that Cincinnati brought off the bench yesterday. The kid named Brooks. Yeah. He was a monster. He was he dwarfed Shaq. He dwarfed Daryl and and uh, Richard. He was so big. Now it, you know he he didn't score a whole lot of points or get a whole lot of rebounds, but just as a specimen, that guy took up. He you know he was kind of a human eclipse. Well, and how about Devondre Perry, who is eight for thirty nine on the season shooting threes and goes five for seven the other night for Temple. And the thing is, you know, as a coach. If he hasn't shown at some point in practice that he has the capability to shoot him a little bit, they're not letting him shoot that many in a game. Well, we've talked about this before. For whatever reason, this year we bring out the best in our opponents. Uh, I think I think it has to do with going up, you know, in a weight class and 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 the media saying that we're going to come in and immediately win the league or dominate the league or whatever. 
And the other thing is, um, you know, the fact that we're ranked and there's the, always that number all year long. We've been in the top 25 and there's that number. So, you know, to beat a ranked team, that's what everyone shoots for. Um, but in his case, uh, he got – obviously the coach – lets him shoot the three for a reason because he's made him in practice, as you mentioned, hasn't made him in a game, but we left him wide open. And unfortunately, it, most of the time it was Daryl Willis overhelping, trying to make sure someone wasn't shooting a layup. And then he's under the basket when this dude is just towing the line. So, you know, we've talked to Daryl about that. And th that's the risk that you run when you try to play two bigs instead of one, you know, instead of Daryl just playing the five with Rano and, and Shaq and then having Marcus and Richard play the, the four, having Daryl out there playing the four is an advantage on the offensive end if you can get it inside like we did yesterday when we, the play we just discussed. But if you don't, then it's a little bit of a disadvantage when that guy is a stretch four like Perry and can shoot the ball. And, and is it a little more uh, incumbent to at least try those lineups occasionally? Because in this league, you are playing teams that have more quality big guys. And certainly when you're looking ahead to possible postseason, you may need that, Matt, that lineup sometimes. Well, I, 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 it was a great example yesterday because Gary Clark is 6'8", 225, 230 as a four-man for Cincinnati. So you, you can't put a small guy on him. You better put a man on him. And Rashard Kelly and Daryl Willis played the four yesterday. And, um, and, and Gary Clark, you know, was not held in check, but I don't think he had one of his better games offensively or dominating on the glass, which he normally does. So, and in the NCAA tournament, when you're going to be playing more power five teams and, and guys that have a, a six, eight or six, nine, four man, you need that extra bulk. So, you know, again, we're we're not. Uh, hopefully, we're, we're we're not playing just right now for an American Athletic Conference championship, but we're playing for seeding and ultimately to be in that NCAA tournament and see how deep we can go. We will continue with Coach Marshall. The Shockers will see to for the first and only time this year on Wednesday night. We'll talk about the Green Wave when we continue. A little fork in the road. If I go this way, I could pancakes and pancakes, but if I go that way, I could omelet some omelets. Do I pancake or do I omelet? Hey, just go to IHOP. They have all kind of omelets that come with pancakes. Where is this IHOP? It's right there. <gasps> Don't leave that horse. IHOP's omelets, omelets, omelets come with pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. When the stakes are high, make sure you're with the winning team. You don't get to be the best by sitting around. Learn more at serenityhomehealth.com. Ever wonder what's in a beer? If it's a Bud Light, it's four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. Winning takes hard work, commitment, and accountability. I'm Wichita State coach Greg Marshall, and I believe in challenging our team, like switching leagues. And so does the hometown team at All Angles Collision Repair. They're in a league of their own, the very best. All Angles has the right people, processes, and prompt service providing state-of-the-art collision repair with 100% customer satisfaction. All Angles, the winning team in auto body repair. All Angles! Hi, I'm Greg Marshall, coach of the Wichita State Shockers men's basketball team, and I'm here to talk to you about Dillon's. Now, I know a thing or two about committing yourself to excellence. That's why I love Dillon's. Because the Dillon's team is committed to high-quality food, low prices, and the kind of friendly service that makes you feel right at home. So next time you're having a party or a tailgate to cheer on the team, stop by Dillon's for your favorite food and drinks. Go Shockers. Great food, low prices at Dillon's.
Welcome back to the Greg Marshall Show from AJ's at the Alley. Wednesday night, Wichita State will face Tulane, not only for the only scheduled time this year, you never know what may happen in the conference tournament, but the first time ever Wichita State has never played Tulane in men's basketball. A year ago, Mike Dunleavy, longtime NBA player and coach, was brought in as the head coach. They went 6-25, and 3-15 and 15 in the conference. At the moment, they're in the midst of a nine-and-a-half game turnaround. They are 13-13. and 13. They've fallen on a little bit of tough times recently with some close losses, but uh, a much improved team with some dangerous guys. Without a doubt, uh, he's got some NBA talent in Frazier and possibly Cam Reynolds, but Frazier's on the draft boards. Um, He's got some a big foreign kid inside. I uh, can't pronounce his name. It's Samich or something like that. Um, uh, he, he, he's got some dudes, and he's obviously a great coach. The thing about Mike Dunleavy, he's, he's one of my childhood heroes. Uh, when I was a kid growing up in South Carolina, he played for the, one of the last great Frank McGuire coached South Carolina Gamecock teams. And just be, he was he's kind of like a – a Ron Baker or a Fred Van Vliet. He, you know, I don't know how highly he was recruited. I was a kid at the time, but he certainly didn't pass the eye test walking in. And, you know, and then he develops and he just, man, this guy's having a great sophomore year and then a great junior year. Ultimately played about 14 years in the NBA. I loved following his career. He ended up being a tremendous three-point shooter. Uh, played, on, I think, on a championship team in Houston and then has coached in the NBA for probably 20 years. So I, I was able to relay that story to him when I met him at the uh, conference meetings in the spring. And just he's a wonderful guy and he's doing a great job with that program. He started having some back issues late in his playing career. So the last couple of years of his playing career with Milwaukee was also the assistant coach and then transitioned into becoming a head coach, was the NBA coach of the year at Portland in 1999. This is the first time he's ever coached at the college level and 63 years old, so I guess was looking for a, a new challenge. He hadn't coached for six years when he came back last year. Yeah, don't, don't expect an easy game. I mean, this guy can coach and they've got great players. Uh, and it's just his second year, so th I'm sure they'll continue to, to build the program, and he's already made great strides. A couple of interesting things. He is one of nine former NBA head coaches coaching in Division One right now. He is one of two Division One head coaches who has a son who is also a Division One head coach, and Tubby Smith is the other, but uh, Mike Dunley ha Dunleavy has a son who's coaching at, and I don't know how to pronounce it, in Connecticut. I Quinnip think it's Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. Yeah, and uh, Tubby Smith's son, uh, Gigi, coaches at Loyola that's interesting they're both in our league yeah and Gigi you uh, you mentioned to me you coached when he was about what five or six he years was old. too <laughs> young to be in basketball camp and he was in station one which was all the little tykes and I was the youngest counselor so I got the little guy so I could relate to him and he was crying every day <laughs> wanting to go home but Tubby wouldn't Tubby would Tubby was tough on him then he's like, he's like a coach he was he was instilling some mental toughness and would not allow him to come home and the guy ended up being a great player for his dad at Georgia and now he's a head coach at Loyola what a great story uh, Tulane a team that scores 74 points a game they average 16 assists per game shooting over 45 percent uh, they also give up about 74 points a game pretty good defending the three-pointer but uh, giving up 44 and a half percent overall so uh, certainly a team you have to stop but maybe some opportunities at the end they other mix end. up the defenses they they're tremendous in spacing which is what the NBA is all about you know the one-on-one -on -one basketball so they space the court very well give their playmakers room to make plays Cam Reynolds is, is an all-conference type player and this Frazier guy is just developed uh, he wasn't on the the watch list early on no one talked about him but he's developed is his uh, I don't I think this is his senior year it could be his junior year into an NBA player actually is a junior Cam Reynolds is a fifth year senior who lost his sophomore year to an injury uh, like three years ago but both of them average about 16 a game Melvin Frazier's 6'5 he is among the national leaders at over two steals per game, shoots about 57.5% from the field, so a very versatile all-around kind of guy. You shoot 57% as a guard, you're, you're getting to the cup. Yeah. They also, uh, the guy that... Uh, 
that Coach mentioned, a foreign player, Samir Sayich, is 6'9", 240, a transfer from Vanderbilt. He was on the Vanderbilt team that Wichita State played in the first four in Dayton a couple of years ago, but didn't actually get into that game. But uh, he's coming off the bench and averaging 10 and a half a game. Has not started a game all year, but he's been in double figures 13 times off the bench, which is a nice weapon to yeah, have. He's a pretty good player. Every film that I've watched, he's gotten work done around the basket. He's pretty tough. I didn't realize he was on the Vanderbilt team because they had their own uh, uh, little covey of seven-footers, if you will. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had Cornette, and they had the kid that was drafted as a lottery pick. I don't forget his name, but he got in early foul trouble against us. You remember his name? I don't. Any, yeah. The big starting center? Yeah, yeah. What a specimen he was. Uh, they have a couple of other mid-sized guys. Ray Ona Embo is 6'5", a sophomore, was a kind of a defensive specialist last year that's evolved into a 10-point-per-game scorer. And then Jordan Cornish is a 6'4", junior transfer from UNLV, and he's averaging about 10 a game. I think we played against Cornish as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure we played against Cornish. I remember him from the scouting report. Um, and the, the other kid that you mentioned that was defensive specialist, think – to kill Cotton, big, strong kid, plays really hard, was a defensive specialist, and now he's, he's putting up some points. Then they also have a freshman named Calvin Daniels, Caleb Daniels, a local kid, 6'4", who's averaging about six a game off the bench, but about 10 a game over the last four or five games. One of those freshmen that's starting to get it and step up his game. Now, when you bit. say local kid, do you mean local to Tulane or local to Wichita? Local to New Orleans. Okay, because if he was a local kid averaging those points and he's from Wichita, I was going to have to talk to my coaches. Why didn't we recruit him? <laughs> I'm sure we'd know that probably, but yeah, New Orleans kid. And they, they've kind of recruited all over, but they do have two or three uh, New Orleans and Louisiana kids, which is probably pretty fertile recruiting ground. Absolutely. And Coach, coach can go anywhere. He can, they, can, they can go, Mike Dunleavy, he can go international. He's got contacts with all the years that he's been in the, the pro game. So look for him to build this program steadily and them to join, you know, the likes of Cincinnati and, and Houston now and SMU, some of the better teams in our league. And they're one of those dangerous teams that's kind of playing with house money. They've made a lot of improvement. they got nothing to lose with every game they go into. Absolutely. At this point, they, they know they've got to win the conference tournament. They were, n they were not healthy for a while. The thing that I know – from scouting them as I would watch a couple of games and Frazier, Frazier was out for like a handful of games minimum. So they would probably be much better record wise if Frazier had been healthy. One game I saw them play, I think it was Houston and literally they it went into the game, went into overtime. They brought in a young man first that had played six minutes all year. This was in the last three weeks. He had played six minutes all year, and he's got to be with the other four for the, for, in overtime. And then they had another kid foul out, and they brought in a kid that had played one minute all year. So they had three regulars and two guys that had combined for seven minutes in previous play. All right, we will come back to wrap things up on the Greg Marshall Show right after this. Now Contour from Cox gets you right to the strange stuff. Something's coming. Something hungry for blood. Noble stuff. The crown must always win. Show me something dramatic. And orange stuff. Along with the best stuff on cable. Because Netflix is now on Contour. How awesome is this place? Just say it. Black Mirror. And get right to the fierce, funny, bold, and bingy stuff. Watch it all on Contour. Just say Netflix to get... With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly, so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into My Account at Cox.com today uh. so you never miss a thing. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots, so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com/learn. 
in the blink of an eye. Cities fall, heroes rise. A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip, and heartbreak leaps from the brink in a blink. Just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies in the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. Now Contour from Cox gets you right to the strange stuff. Something's coming. Something hungry for blood. Noble stuff. The crown must always win. Show me something dramatic. And orange stuff. Along with the best stuff on cable. Because Netflix is now on Contour. How awesome is this place? Just say it. Black Mirror. And get right to the fierce, funny, bold, and bingy stuff. Watch it all on Contour. Just say Netflix to get started. March brings two great shocker traditions, the NCAA tournament and stocking the shelves at our daily bread food pantry. And starting next Monday, the 26th, you'll have a chance when you go to Carlos O'Kelly's in either Wichita or Hutchinson, you donate a dollar to the food pantry and you'll go into a drawing for an autographed shocker basketball. So chance to do that and make a contribution to a very good cause. So keep that in mind. Think about Carlos O'Kelly's when you're looking for somewhere to eat. Back with Greg Marshall, we talked about Tulane Wednesday night. Saturday you make a trip to SMU uh, against a team that's a little bit hard to figure right now. They've been down to as many as seven scholarship players recently because of injuries and limitations they already had. Shake Milton, who had such a great game here, is literally day-to-day, game-to-game, so who knows if we may see him or not on Saturday. Yeah, he hasn't played in probably another handful of games, but my guess is he'll be okay when the Shockers <laughs> roll into town. That's just what I'm planning on. Uh, tremendous player. He was he was a one man wrecking crew uh, when we played him. Um, but we've got Tulane first, then uh, a big trip down to Dallas. I understand President former President Bush will be at the game, so wow. uh, maybe maybe I get a chance to say hello to him. Um, maybe I can get him into the locker room with a victory song. See if he can do the victory song. That that would be the key. We've got to <laughs> win the game because we now control our own destiny. We have four regular season games left. If we win them all. We will win the conference and be number one seed going into the conference tournament. And you feel like you get down to this stage of the season, three regular season games left after Wednesday night, and and with certainly an invigorating win yesterday over Cincinnati, that your guys can start to feel that now it's you know, it's kind of just a, like a fresh breath of air going down the street. Yeah, and I, th- I, I don't even have to try to motivate them. I, I, yesterday I said, look, you, you it's, it's your time now. You seniors, this is your time. This is when you take over. I, I've, you've heard me yell and scream and motivate and give. I'll, I'll, I'm out. I'm, the Newt Rockney deal is done. You've got to do it now yourself for you because this, your, this is your legacy. Six of you will be known. You'll be known as sh- great shockers, but more importantly, you'll be known as what you did your senior year. And uh, I think they bought into that. So I'm excited about uh, the, the wins this past week. I'm excited about what's upcoming. It's going to be a, another – got two more weeks of the regular season, four more games. I'm excited about what Keith Adams did last week. I mean, to, to win two more games, she's doing a great job. I'm excited about Todd Butler being undefeated through three games and going on the road to do that and building some confidence with his team. And, and I, I know they're going to turn the corner. So I'm, 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 I'm excited about all of those things. I want to take our team as far as we can into March and hopefully April and then uh, get kick back and enjoy some baseball. All right, Coach, thank you. Shocker head coach Greg Marshall and all of those things that he mentioned we're going to be talking about here very shortly. Keitha Adams up next talking Shocker women's basketball and then our first Todd Butler show of the year from 8 to 9 to recap the Shockers opening three-game series against McNeese State and their upcoming opening series in what will probably be bitter freezing conditions against Omaha here this weekend. Shockers home Wednesday night against 
Tulane, 6.30 tip-off, and then on the road at 1 o'clock Saturday at SMU. We're down to the last four games of the regular season, just two left at home, so use those tickets if you've got them. Should be a fun finish, and we appreciate all of you joining us for the Greg Marshall Show. Keith Adams coming up next, so stay with us. With Cox My Account, 